G'day viewers, I just thought I'd let you know that a great little game is getting some more love. It's Diesel Railcar Simulator and it's available on PC. It's an early access game, but it's been early access since 2018, so it'll probably stay that way, I guess. It does get fairly regular updates, at least in recent times, so let's go. Scenery patch number 11. So they've just released the new patch. I think we need to play this, but it won't be today. They have fixed a problem. When I say they, actually, I think it's one person plus a little crew. But fixed a problem with a root editor map becoming unresponsive after adding a new chain, but cancelling immediately. Fixed a possible crash in the root editor when left clicking on things in the map view. Fixed a crash in the root editor when changing a node's model source to cut out speed limits while model ID is blank. Fixed a root editor to update map view after removing things like nodes. Fixed possible broken animations when manually placing multiple instances of the same animated model. Removed option to merge a looping track into itself in the root editor because it would crash. That means you can't do circles. Or tramway loops. Disabled compression when saving data to files in order to make process more robust. Changed file writing to automatically save a backup copy of the previous file. That's always a good idea. In the editor side panel, they've fixed a possible crash when selecting an option from the editor side panel. Fixed a problem with the tree not responding correctly to mouse button clicks until after clicking on at least once on the map view. Fixed a problem with random tree item being highlighted after selecting an option from a list in the side panel. Fixed editor side panel to scroll back to the correct position after selecting an option. Fixed a bug where a new child node added to the side panel would not appear correctly. Rename the side panel bottom edge, add button to OK, since add doesn't make sense in some contexts. Signaling. Fixed a possible crash in the signaler AI. You know, signaling in this game, you actually have to pay attention to it, because if you go past a red, it doesn't care, you just crash into a train. Fixed signaler AI, not to clear a signal if the junction section overlaps an earlier cleared section, which might lead to conflicting route setting at junctions in looping tracks. Added an option to create a fixed distance, one that always shows caution. Added an option to link distance to the next signal only, effectively creating a repeater. Added seek routes to the root editor side panel when the properties of signal are open. These represent the possible paths from that signal onwards to other signals or track sections ends that can be cleared. Added a signal option to disable the automatic update of seek routes. Custom signal models. We'll see one of these in a minute. Added the option to hide the default models of signals and distance. Added a function to create the equivalent default model of a signal or distance as a plane, editable nodes and animations. Added an entity ID field node to animation data for linking the animation variables to a particular object like a signal or distance. Changed distant and signal descriptions to include the entity ID in the editor side panel. Added GWR siding arm model to the built-in library. So most of these fixes are about building routes by the look of it. Miscellaneous fixed a possible crash when loading a route. Fixed a possible crash when generating logs. Fixed a crash when loading a packed model that was invalid path file characters in its ID. Fixed a possible crash when loading a packed model with a high number of vertices. Fixed cutout speed limit signs, reshaped 6, rescaled 7, and restored old thinner more realistic arrows. Reduced memory consumption of the terrain system. That will be excellent for the people on potatoes. One of the cool things about this game is you can actually play it on almost anything. Added a low memory notification. So this is a new double doll signal, where the uh, signal shows, both signals are showing the same aspect for the same route on the same track. Uh, it's just for height variation, so that everybody can see it. And there you go. Custom tool semaphore with coacting arms. That's what they are indeed. Next major update will be the gameplay update. More on that later and smaller patches as required. So as you can probably tell as I scroll down through here, we talked about scenery patch 10 before. But um, yeah, it's really cool that this game is actively being edited and manipulated because there's plenty of things happening with it. So Diesel Railcar Simulator, if you haven't given it a crack, I suggest that you probably should because it's a pretty good little game. So I dare say I could just play you its little video. I would have to put the uh, sound on though, so we can just watch this for a moment because I'm not going to set the sounds up while we're recording things. But it's not a bad little game. It's probably a closer match to Train Simulator Classic than the Train Sim World variety. So in this game, you effectively are the train because you can't walk around in the world. It does have some pretty cool features that are only just coming out in other train games. Things like bad track and suspension that we're looking at now. 
It's got full models of suspension, so it's pretty clever. Anyway, the scenery isn't it isn't photorealistic or anything like that, but nor is it bad. It's actually quite a reasonable game. And I streamed this a while ago. I think I should get into it and play it again, though. I think I should. All right, folks, have fun. As always, reading you things like this to uh, bring the information in a different way to make it more accessible. If you've got any questions or comments on this game or you'd like to see me stream it again, let me know in the comments. See you later. Bye now. We played a game.